From time to time, we have a need to speed up our workflow in Lightroom. And also, sometimes we want to create a particular style in our editing so that all the images look the same in a gallery. We do this all in Lightroom Classic. And one of the ways of accomplishing this is to create presets. Today, I'm going to show you how to make your own presets in Lightroom Classic. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, back again today to share some knowledge of working inside a Lightroom Classic. Today, I'm going to give you a breakdown of presets, what you can do with them, and then some of the things that you can do with them might surprise you about making your own presets here in Lightroom Classic. Now, you can buy presets from someone who's taken the time to build them to their personal liking, and it can be a good way to go, and i be honest, I've done it myself. However, I usually end up slightly changing the purchase presets to match what exactly I'm looking for. So I look at purchased presets as a good starting point. So now what's the old saying? Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. T teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. So today I'm gonna to show you how to fish. In other words, I'm gonna show you how to make your own presets in Lightroom Classic. So let's get to it. If you like this sort of content, learning about how to get the most out of Lightroom Classic or Photoshop or any of the reviews on photography techniques that I do, take a second to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and then ring the bell to be notified of my next video. I appreciate it. So we've got a couple of images here in Lightroom. These are some great blue heron on a nest. So let's take the first one here and make some changes to it. So we're going to the develop module and we'll go into our basic panel. And say the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, let's make this into a black and white. So let's go ahead and hit the black and white. And we can see what we've done here. We're going to actually probably increase the contrast a little bit. We'll zoom this up, take a closer look at uh, what we've got. And we'll slide down here. And whenever I do black and whites, I always go to this black and white panel where the sliders are here. And we have the ability to change the tones, how the tones actually read inside of the black and white work inside of Lightroom, right? So this is how we can change it. We can make yellows darker. Let's go ahead and go to the yellows. He's got a lot of yellow in him, but we want to brighten that up, brighten his eyes, and keep that contrast going. And then, of course, if we come over here to fit, we can see how the greenery is going to be affected. All right, we'll lighten up some of that greenery. There's a little bit of blue. All right, so that's pretty good. We'll go back to basic here, and we'll probably end up maybe lifting the shadows just a little bit and maybe creating even a little more contrast. And one of the ways I like to deal with contrast is the dehaze button because the dehaze, if you slide it way over, you can see you can do a lot of contrast changes, but you don't have to slide it very much and you can really get some nice increased con contrast. So this is everything we want to do in our black and white. So now what we do is we come over to presets and there's a whole bunch of presets that are loaded. And if you're not seeing it, it's going to be this little down triangle. You'll click on that and come over here to plus and we're going to create a preset. And we'll just call this black and white. So now that's the name of our preset. All of the things that we just told it to do from the black and white mix, uh, anything of our... The, any of the points like on our basic panel that we did, we clicked on here, we're, so we're all good to go, and we hit create. And so now that creates over here in our user presets, a black and white preset. So let's go to any other image, let's grab another one. Now if we hover over this, watch what happens. It turns it and shows us, hey, this is what it'll look like if you click on it. So you can just take this and click on any of these images. Let's go ahead and get to a totally different image and create the same black and white tone. So you can keep that black and white, your black and white consistent over all of your images. So that's a, a fantastic way to go. All right, this is kind of an interesting thing. Here we've got this image here of these, um, these geese. We go to the crop tool and let's go ahead and bring that crop all the way nice and tight and we'll hit okay. That's our crop. And let's just, for the sake of discussion, we're gonna darken this a little bit, add some contrast, and let's well, see, we'll lighten it up just a little bit. And then maybe we'll add a bunch of yellow to it. So that's gonna be our preset. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go to create preset. And we're gonna say, I want all the things clicked 
Well, look at this. There's no place for crop. So you can't crop and expect that to work in a preset. That has to be done individually. Or if you wanted to do a image here, you have an opportunity, if we go back to G here, you have an opportunity where you can work on an image and then let's say we hold down the shift key. Now we can sync settings, right? So if we click on sync settings, you'll see that they've added crop right here. So that means it will do the crop so that's how you can do cropping in multiples, right? As you, and you've done this before, I'm sure, as you click on whatever it is, the changes you want to make, hold the shift key down to do the rest and then sync settings. Only then will you have the crop. So it's not something you can keep inside of, a, inside of a, an actual preset is your crops. All right, so here's a couple of bridal images. Let's go ahead and grab this one and let's do some changes in here. So again, we're trying to make a preset that we can utilize throughout this whole event, right? So let's come up here to masking. We'll click on that. We have our choices here of masking that we can do, right? But also Lightroom will put a little face down here for people and say, hey, is this the person that you wanna work with? And in this case, the answer is yes. So instead of doing the entire person, what I wanna do is just do the lips. So we're just gonna do the lips and then we're gonna tell it to create a mask. So it's gonna create a mask for the lips. And now what I wanna do is I want to, uh, let's give this a really bright red color. And we're gonna also make the saturation way up. So we can see what we've done here. We've really reddened her lips. Now what we're gonna do is come over here and make a, a preset and we're gonna create it a preset and we're gonna call it lips. Now here's the most important thing. Here we'll, most important thing is to spell it right. So this is the most important thing. You have to make sure that you click these masks, right? Cause that generally is gonna be unclicked. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you're uh, creating this type of a preset that has masking in it, you have to click those boxes cause they're gonna come up blank every time. So we're gonna hit create. And so now Lightroom is going to create a mask each time for this. So let's go ahead and come into a totally different image here. Same woman, but we're gonna click lips. And now we're gonna go in here and we'll see what it's done. Yeah, so it created a mask for the lips and brightened up those lips. So you could do that throughout all of your images if you wanted. Probably more realistically in terms of making presets Let's go ahead and come in here. We're gonna come up and make a, let's take something new here. We're gonna to go to our mask and we're gonna do a radial gradient. So let's grab this and we'll grab this from way over here and just drag this in, crossed her a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, in that mask, we're gonna increase the exposure so it's brighter. We're gonna really warm it up a ton. So let's go ahead and warm it up. Boy, magenta and yellow. We could even add, you know, an orange color to it. Let's go ahead and do that. So we've got a lot of amber color here. Let's go ahead and create another mask. And we'll click up here and do linear gradient. And now we're going to drag this in from the side. And here we're going to actually make this darker. So let's go ahead and bring the exposure down. Good, just like that. And in our overall, we're gonna make sure that her dress isn't too bright, so we'll bring the highlights down on her dress. And for that, we're good to go. So we've created an orange glow coming over on the, on the upper left-hand side of the image, and we've darkened this side. So let's go ahead and make a preset, and we'll create the preset, and we'll go call this Bride. And you see here, again, our masking isn't clicked. So we have two masks, so we wanna click those, right? We wanna click both those masks. We have the linear gradient and the radial gradient. Those are our two masks that we created. So let's go ahead and hit create. Now, when we go into any other image, we can hover over this and see if we like this, right? It'll show us the exact same thing. As we click on it, now we've added it. And it'll work on any image. So if we come over here, we go to bride, click on that, we can go to lips, add her lips. It's going to think about it. It's got to go in and say, let's make it. So now it's added the lips. So we're using multiple presets on the same image. You can you do the same thing over here, right? If you wanted to, let's say we'll take this image here and now we're going to go in and we'll make a new preset. 
and let's go in and do a mask and we're gonna do her face. So let's go ahead and click on her face and this is the person we wanna mask and we wanna do facial skin and then we're gonna have Lightroom create a mask. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our effects and bring our, our texture way down. So that's really gonna soften that skin. Let's take a look. Yeah, see that softened it quite a bit. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll, uh, we'll just call this soften skin. So let's go ahead and create a preset. And remember, we have to click our mask, right? We did our mask of her skin. We'll hit create. And now we have, these are all our new presets this week that we made, right? So let's take a look. Let's go into this image here. We haven't done anything to it yet. And let's go ahead and look at our develop. And let's go into soften skin. So it'll go in, it'll look for her skin on her face and soften it. Uh, it will, we can go up here to lips and add the bright red lips. And then we can also do that color bounce that we did on the, uh, on the, on the biggest one. So we've got the color, we've got the vignette down here, we've got the softened skin, and you can do this on any of your images. So even an image that doesn't fit, we could take this and go, oh, let's do head softened skin. So as we go into softened skin, it'll do a mask of all these people and soften the skin of them. So if we, here's before and after, before and after. So we're able to soften the skin. If that's something you want to do on all of your images before you deliver them to a customer, that's a simple way to go. So now that you've created all of these uh, presets, you're going to create a bunch of these, right? And you're going to name them as you go. Now, if you don't like the way something's named, you can rename it. Uh, but a simple way is just right click on it and you can rename. Those are all things you can do. But what's also neat is you can export these and share them or sell them. If you wanted to sell them, you could do that. So let's go into our user presets and go export the group. And let's go ahead and put that onto our, our desktop. So let's go in here, desktop, and we'll call this presets. And we'll just say Terry's. And we'll hit save. And now we're going to go back in here and let's get rid of these. Real simple, we can delete them. So right click and delete. It says, hey, do you really want to de delete this? Right click and delete. All right, so we've deleted all of those so we don't have any user presets. <clears throat> so if I were to get these precepts from somebody or I shared them with a friend, I just come in here and I hit the plus sign and I go to import presets. We click on import and I go to find those and we remember we named them Terry's. So let's go ahead and click on that and go import. And it thinks for a while and boom, look at that. All of those presets are all back in place and we can use them right away. So you can share them, you can sell them, and you can just keep them to work on all your images to create a good series of images that all look like they came from the same photographer. Now, if you have any questions or comments about any of my tutorials, feel free to leave comments in the section below, and I read and respond to every comment on all the videos I produce. If you'd like to get a hold of me personally, just send me an email to terry at imagelight.com, and I'll get back to you. I have things on my website, the digital products page, like I have brushes, which are different than presets. Brushes are, uh, I have a, a video on brushes. I'll put that up here if you like to learn how to do brushes, but uh, they're different than presets. Presets will handle your entire images where brushes are specific to a different uh, individual brush as you're working with them. So those are a little bit different. I do have those to sell, but uh, you can go over to my website, and check it out. If it works, great. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.